Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Lorenzo's Music Podcast. I'm Tom Ray, and on today's show, I am talking with a musician who is based here in Madison. And as far as I knew, they were just in one band. They were in a band called Gentle Brontosaurus. And I've actually spoken with them on another podcast I do, uh, spoke with them in the past. But they recently just did a remix for a remix EP that we have coming out where other artists and musicians did remixes of the previous six songs that we just released over the past year. And this person was one of the first to do a remix of one of our songs. So I wanted to reach out to them and talk about their music, about their new project that they have coming out called Spiral Island. And they have a, they have a new album of their own solo project, Spiral Island, coming out in August. And we just talk about that, the process, about just really what their plans are for releasing the album, what they're going to do. And you know what? Here's the interview starting right now. I'm Nick Davies. I uh, record on my own as Spiral Island. I'm also a member of General Bonasaurus. Uh, in general, things. In your also, so you're based here in Madison, and General Brontosaurus is the band that I know you from for the years. Right. Yeah, okay. we've been, uh, this is, General Brontosaurus is coming up on like our 10 year anniversary at some point this year. Okay. Um, I don't know, we haven't really marked the occasion yet, but we should no? before the year ends. Well, I, I say that like, what a surprise. I've never done that. So what am I going like, why haven't you, you know, I've never done yeah. a like anniversary of a thing. Well, our, our start date is a little blurry because, you know, after Juan Juan and I were in TLDR before that, and when that band split up, you know, a couple of people went to grad school programs elsewhere in the country. Mm -hmm. So um, Juan Juan and I were kind of starting up something new and, and gradually bringing people on board and like rehearsing with different people. Yeah. Um, and so it, it was a little while there where like, there was a gray area where we had, you know, three people in the room, five people in the room. Like, where do you oh, draw really? the line that, yeah. that the band started? I don't know. At one point in time, we had eight people in the band. We had like uh, two or no, three horn players and a guy who played keyboard and trumpet. He would alternate. But like, yeah, at one point in time, we had eight people in the room and it was just it was crazy. So, nice. but they did the same thing. Most of them were just, you don't think of that as a person who's lived in Madison his entire life. You don't think of the fact like, oh, these people are just here for college. <laughs> and when they're done, they're going to go do stuff <laughs> and then they disappear. Yeah. It so, happens. Yeah. And how, did, so how did the name gentle brownosaurus come about? Um, it came from kind of this think piece <laughs> around that time where it was like, about how you can get what you want by, you know, if, if you're on a flight that's being delayed and need to be rebooked, like standing right by the, the booking agent, just kind of leaning in. And <laughs> I don't know if that would work with me. <laughs> yeah. You know, I just need a little favor here. Um, <laughs> and they called it kind of the general brontosaurus technique or whatever. This sounds like a children's book to me. It's <laughs> like what you just did there was very, was very teacher at story time, acting it out sort of thing <laughs> along with the phrase Jonah. I liked it though. That's fun. <laughs> and so how did uh, you, I saw from your, uh, from your personal hmm. website that you moved here around 2007. Yeah. I, when I graduated college, I got recruited up here by Epic. Okay. Uh, all right. Are you doing backend web development? I know that it says you're a developer. What are you doing? And I know like 90% of the people who do web development here in Madison are backend developers. I don't know why that is. Huh. I, I do full stack. You do full uh, stack. Okay. Yeah. Kind of okay. whatever is needed. Um, yeah, I'm working for uh, Greenhouse Software. It's a mm. nominally New York based company, but we're all over at this point. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. I was just curious about that because it, it seemed like from some of your blog posts that I saw, they were uh, back in development. Sorry, folks, we're going to go off on a little bit of a web developer thing here for a sec, because I, I'm, I'm a front end developer. Sure. I'm the guy that works with you and has to make it look good so they don't complain uh, in marketing. Uh, so, 
The uh, I do love the fact, both the websites that you have for your personal website and for the general brontosaurus, I love the fact that you're using GitHub pages. I've always wanted to do that. Uh, first yeah. of all, are you using, uh, are you doing Jekyll or are you just doing a straight up HTML? Yeah, those are Jekyll. Um, okay. I had some lofty aspirations of setting up kind of a CRM for like some source of content uh -huh. outside of the the repo or the app itself that I could like load in. Um, but I don't know. I haven't found like a perfect fit for that. You know, nah. it's like okay. if, if you set up a Google doc that you have to go update then like who remembers to go update the Google doc. Right. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've always want, I've, I've gotten as far as getting ready to publish it and switch over the domain using a, a GitHub pages and a static Jekyll site. Cause I really love messing with Jekyll and I can get it to do all kinds of crazy stuff that I want it to do. But there's one fatal flaw and that's, I like to schedule my posts and mm -hmm. you can't really schedule. I mean, I know you can get like, what is it? The co-pilot or whatever the thing you can set that up, but I don't, yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to have to set it up. I just wanted to know that if I put it in a draft and set a date on it, post at this date. That's the one thing that keeps me from pulling the plug on it. So yeah. if you find a way to do kind of scheduled tasks with those GitHub pages, I, I would be interested to hear about it. Yeah, no, they're, they're, with the new automated copilot or whatever they're calling it in GitHub, I know people say you can do it, but I don't want to go through and figure it out. And it seems like, oh, you got to write a script to do this. And it's like, well, that's if I have to write a script, then I should just do it myself. So, but I don't want to anyway. Yeah. So that's the end of our, of our tech talk for today. Uh, moving on <laughs> the, uh, so one of the reasons that I wanted to talk to you, first of all, is, uh, just because you're a musician here in town and I love that, but two is that I, and this is probably just on me not making the connection or knowing that it was you. I did not know mm -hmm. about your project spiral Island. And I want to know more about that. So you started yeah. a project called Spiral Island, uh, I want to say just a few years back, right? Um, yeah, I think the first Spiral Island album was around like 2017. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't know. It was, it was originally kind of like, oh, there's some like genres I want to try out, you know, put in, putting together some material and like explore some territory that isn't necessarily in the, the band's core territory, if you will. And like, uh, it's just kind of been a thing from there and, and to kind of, uh, it's kind of a proving ground of my own uh, recording and mixing and producing skills where okay. like, um, you know, a lot of that comes into play with the band as well. But I don't know, it's, it's a whole nice to have like, a, a place to test that out where no one else is impacted, if you will, or like, um, yeah. yeah, or like, yeah, I guess if, if the band was kind of the only outlet, then you have like a lot of expectation of like, oh, I really want this to like reflect the, the most of my abilities or like mm -hmm. be the, what I want it to be. Um, but yeah, I don't know if that makes sense. No, it does. And I, I guess the hardest thing being if you're and, and for me, even it's just like if I ever wanted to do something, it's like, well, but I'm spending my time on this and then writing for that. It, it, I guess what prompted you to first of all go, I do want to delve down these other genres and how did you approach writing songs for these other genres that you, that you mentioned? Yeah. I mean, I think it's just that like, you know, I, I listen widely. I think, you know, a lot, pretty much everybody in music does, you know, regardless <laughs> of what you hear coming out of them, they're taking in like a lot of other stuff. Yeah. Um, and so it's just like, other things that I'm listening to and that I want to see more of in the world. You know, try okay. that out and take that on. Okay. Um, I don't know. It was also kind of a, I mean, in recent years, more of a, also kind of a pandemic outlet of like, there was a, a dead period where like we weren't meeting as a band for I don't know, a year, year and a half. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was a way to, to keep active musically and, you know, were there particular genres? I guess, what were the genres that were influencing this? Yeah, I guess like when I started the project, I was, I was into a lot of like shoegaze and post-rock. Um, I guess more recently it's been, I've been getting in, into more like 
dance pop and stuff and like mm -hmm. Eurovision and um, yeah, not not something you're gonna hear coming out of General Brontosaurus. Right, right. <laughs> like, well, why not though? But it, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It it could be uh, could be could be cool, but it's also I don't know. You can kind of it's something you can do as an individual producer. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Some of it, you know, vocals are recorded live here. I, I do some live guitars and keyboards here and there. And also, like a lot of it, you can just sit mm -hmm. on the couch and write a beat, you know? <laughs> right. Where did the name come from? Where did Spiral Island come from? Um, it, it's originally the name of this uh, kind of experimental art project. Um, really? Wow, I, should, I should know the artist's name at this point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he kind of gathered up this like garbage in the ocean and kind of turned it into a livable raft kind of thing and like sailed around to different places. Um, and like, you know, it, for real did or in a story did. Yeah, this is a real thing. And really, yeah, this sounds so, made I mean, it to was, me, but okay. <laughs> it was an art piece about kind of the waste that goes into our oceans and about, okay living with that um so i don't know i thought it was a cool name <laughs> yeah um but also ap apparently more recently spiral island is also a location in animal crossing and also in the zelda games <laughs> they both have they both have yes. locations called spiral island you know once that... you set up like google alerts you, <laughs> you learn about this stuff <laughs> right. yes yeah, that was my understanding was that it, I was just like, oh, we named it after something he found in a video game. And then I searched for it quick and I was like, oh, yes, that must be it. And then I'm like, nope, don't be judge or don't be quick to judge. Find out. And it is something more. OK, more substantial. And because otherwise I was going to be like, was it from Zelda or was it from <laughs> Animal Crossing? <laughs> Wanted to see yeah. which one your preference was as far as those games. It's a okay. nice synergy. I haven't actually played any of those games yet. But. No, neither have I. I. It was literally the Google search thing. That's what I'm talking about. I, <laughs> I saw the same thing when, when I was searching it. So now with those, uh, you, have, you have an album coming out under the Spiral Island name, which is it just yeah. you or are there other people collaborating on it? Um, this one's just me. Um, I don't know. I'd love to do more collaboration in the future, maybe on the next one. I'd reach okay. out to people ahead of time and get something going. Um, I mean, these songs, I guess this kind of gets into the origin story of it. I, I also do February album writing month every mm -hmm. year where during the month of February, the goal is to write 14 songs. So you typically have 28 days. I mean, like a song every other day. Right. Um, and that's kind of where all the songs uh, on this album originated there, at least in to some extent. And on the previous album, I think almost all of them came mm -hmm. out of February album, album writing month. Um, so to circle back to the question, what was the question? They, <laughs> it's, it's kind of just like a, an omnibus or kind of best of, of like what's been going on in the past few years. Okay. I've Getting tried to out do, of the vault. well, I've, I've tried to do the, um, the RPM challenge, the February writing thing. Um, yeah, I, I never got it. I love it on paper. I love the concept. I think that every year it comes around. I'm like, that's really great. But, um, it's just, it's, I, I can't move on that fast. And, and I think yeah. I, I would like to, I know it's meant to inspire and help create and all that. And I like the fact too, that you're like, a lot of those were from that and what probably happened. Uh, and I guess you can answer this is you did that and then you expanded on them after the fact. Is that correct? Yeah. I mean, everything got kind of redone afterwards. Um, yeah. And some of it was just like, I did an instrumental during February album running length and then like, a lot of times you can have collaborations amongst that community and say like, Hey, I did an instrumental. Anybody want to do vocals on this? Yeah. Um, but one of those instrumentals, you know, I ended up doing my own vocals on it later on and kind of turning that into an album track. Okay. All right. And uh, yeah. And my problem with it is I just, I can't, 
I, I guess maybe I know it's meant to inspire people to write and it's just like, well, I, I write all the time and I don't want to just go, here's another mm -hmm. song the next day. Here's another song the next day. For me, it's just like, well, I could do that, but I don't have to release it. That, that's the thing is by the time I'm like, ah, oh, this isn't really me going, okay, now I've created a body of work to work on, and, which is what it's meant to inspire. Just like the, um, the November mm -hmm. or I, I can never remember, but yeah. the Inktober stuff Nano where it's Rimo. meant to inspire people to draw and it's supposed to get it going. And I applaud that, but I've talked to people too. And they're like, you know, I'm, I'm doing it this year. And then I don't know what I'm going to do after that. And it's like, well, no, you can keep doing it, go back around yeah. and keep doing it, you know? But uh, yeah, for me, it's just like, it's one of those things where it's a great, I think it's a great idea, but I've just never really, I started to do it once. And then after writing the first one, I was like, I'm going to spend a week on this song now. I, I like it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's kind of the push and pull of like, yeah, sometimes halfway through the month you get, you get to the good song and then it's like, right. oh, <laughs> but now I'm supposed to keep churning out less good songs. Why would yeah. I do that? Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's like you get one good song out of a bunch of mid material, you know? It, yeah. But, but I do like the fact that you did it the way that I would have liked to have done it, but I've just never done it that way. The, the way I was like, if I do that again, that's how I'm going to do it is just do a thing each day and then build on them later. And yeah, I dig that. So how many songs total did you actually do the full, what was it? 28, I guess that month. Um, it's 14 for, that's kind of the goal for February. Oh, okay. I think I got to maybe 15 this year. Oh, I, I went a little bit, I, sh I, I overshot a little bit because there were a couple where it wasn't like entirely me. Um, like I counted the, uh, remix that I did as part of your remix contest. Cause that half that came up in February and I was like, oh, this is a fun challenge. Mm -hmm. And if I do kind of an additive remix then i feel like I'm, I'm you know introducing musical elements to that wait are you talking about the remix you did for us yeah yeah oh you counted <laughs> that okay all right i got you now <laughs> <laughs> so that's it for people listening now another reason i'm talking to him is because we had a remix uh thing that we have a remix album that or ep that we're putting out through block sonic a net label for net label day this year in july and one of the people who submitted was also Nick here. So, uh, and I, and the thing is, is you sent it to me as uh, a spiral Island remix. And I thought you were just titling that. That's why when I did the Google search, I'm like, Oh, he just is using this thing from a video game. And then when I saw your album that you said is coming out in August, I'm like, Oh, he's actually got a project called spiral Island. So see, it all comes together. People. Uh, <laughs> okay. So you counted that as it, and it was 15. All right. Yeah. So yeah, it was well timed to have that contest during February and then to be like releasing it, you know, ahead of the album. Yeah. No, th that helps explain it too. Like you were already in full mode of doing stuff like that. Cause I was just like, damn, he sent that fast. Like you sent it maybe a week after we made the announcement, I think, or something like that. It was pretty quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was, it was also like, you know, because we kind of know each other and yeah. I was like, I'll do kind of a cheeky remix where I like take your vocals and like pitch shift them up. And like, right. you know. I dug that. It was great. No, it was the first one I heard. So I was pleasantly surprised when I heard it. Yeah. My, uh, my guitar player is the one who ended up mastering all the remixes for the EP. And when he was listening to it, he was like, and this is actually going to lead up to my next question that I have, but he was listening to it, trying to pin it down. And he's like, it reminds me of something, but I can't think of what, you know? And then finally, just all of a sudden mm. he was like human league. I was like, really? Mm. And then I listened to it again. I'm like, okay, I can see where he got it that from. It's not like a flat out human league thing, but I was like, okay, I see where he's, he's, he's getting that from, but it was an interesting thing. And I'm sure that wasn't your intention. So. Yeah. I don't know. I was thinking <laughs> of it in terms of like, Parts of it are more sort of tropical house music. Yeah, that's what I got. And, and parts of it are more um, anarchic, like St. Vincent breakdowns. You know? Oh, yeah. Hmm. Well, then this going into the next question, how would you explain the music that you're making with Spiral Island? So you had all these influences, but what is the outcome? What would you what would you yeah. deem it? 
Um, I don't know. It's it's a an odd kind of little niche. I guess on the on the upcoming album, there are some kind of pop punk songs. Mm -hmm. um, there are some sort of house songs or like kind of Euro pop stuff. Um, I don't know. I I also started writing uh, songs in Dutch. Uh, I've been learning Dutch because I have family over in the Netherlands. Really? And you know, I want to be able to like keep up with them and in their language. Okay. Um, so it's also kind of a language uh, learning and pronunciation exercise to, to write mm -hmm. lyrics in Dutch and, and on those. How long have you been studying Dutch? Um, I think I started at the beginning of 2022, a couple okay. of years at this point. Interesting. I don't know if I know anybody who speaks Dutch. I mean, I know you, but right, it's it's not a super common se second language in the United States, you know. Yeah. Okay. And um, now, what is your process now that you're doing these yourself? You're recording these songs, writing them. What is your process when you're making songs for this upcoming album? Yeah, I mean, it, so a lot of the the skeletons are coming from February album album writing month, and then you know go back and kind of retract the guitars to get you know more of the tone i want or like you know better performances um yeah kind of retracking vocals a lot of times you know the first vocal take is like finding the note mm -hmm. and then when you go back you actually know what what the note is supposed to be um, yeah yeah i don't know i mean and then like it's been kind of a lot of like little production accents and like mixing techniques um, I don't know, learning a lot from the electronic music community about like side chaining and stuff, which has been interesting. Right. Yeah. I, I learned about side chaining a while ago. Um, I use it. And then a lot of the times when I use it, I'm like, Oh, that didn't need to be done there, <laughs> <laughs> but it was certainly a, a nice process to go through to learn how to do it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, yeah, I did, I did, there was a stage where I was kind of applying it everywhere mm -hmm. and then I, I got, I came to this realization that like, if you have kind of a muscular guitar part that you want to add to the intensity of the song, then it, it needs to bump the level of the song as a whole up. It needs to be yeah. additive. And so it can't be behind the vocals. It can't be behind the drums in that way. Yeah. No, it, I've learned only if I really do want to have something sound like the, the sound is being sucked away at a certain part. That's when I use side chaining. Cause that's really, if, if it's not doing it in a sense where I can really tell it's doing it, I'm a do it all the way or don't use it mm. at all type of guy when it comes to sound chaining <laughs> or side chaining. Um, what do you start with? Do you start with a beat? Is there a specific way that you start out or uh, do you go with a guitar line or all of yeah, them? Yeah, it, re it really depends. I don't know. I, I try to mix it up in terms of like starting with guitar, starting with keyboards or... Okay. Yeah, starting with a beat, um, I feel like those take you in in different directions, or you know, that's my experience. Mm -hmm. So, okay, <laughs> what yeah, uh... it it opens up more creative avenues or more. I feel yeah. like if you, if you sit down at the piano too many times, you just end up with a lot of same sounding piano songs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what uh, do you ever search for beats, or are you just making them yourself? Um, I, I haven't done too much with kind of sample based music, I would say. Okay. All right. Um, so yeah, I guess most of it is like, yeah, either keyboards here or like in the box, uh, synth patches or, um, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I haven't, haven't done too much with, with kind of samples or kind of different people's backing tracks or anything like that. Okay. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd I don't, be interested. Right. And I don't either that much, but I've kind of been incorporating it. Uh, and I go to free sound a lot, basically, is where I go. I don't I don't download packs and try to search from that way. I literally just go to freesound.org and search for whatever I'm looking for or a BPM that I'm looking for and then kind of base it off of that. I found a really yeah. cool uh, one of the remixes we have uh, actually has a really cool uh, typewriter beat. So a guy had an old typewriter and he did it to uh, 96 BPM and he does nice. this rhythm on a typewriter with the, 
you know, the swoop, you know, going from side to side and then setting the, what's it, the roll or whatever back. Yeah. And it's a, I never would have thought to use that sample. And I was like, it, it was pretty, it was pretty sick. Uh, <laughs> so that's, if you ever cool. want to look for something to mess around with, it's a cool place to go because there's no rhyme or reason to the types of samples that are there. It can be field noises, all kinds of crazy stuff on that site. So anyway, uh, now the, what's the DAW you're using to record all this stuff? Um, I've been using Reaper. Okay. Um, I don't know. It's a, it's a relatively inexpensive one and it, it does seem to like support kind of, as far as I've experienced, whatever kind of plugins you want to use. Right. Um, yeah, I'd be, I'm kind of interested in, in other DAWs, but I haven't invested the time to really, yeah, to really make it my home, you know? It, it seems like it's fun to go, oh, but this one does this and this one does this. Really what it is, is it's like, well, I could be making music or I can be studying DAWs and testing them out all day because there's so many. I, I see the arguments on the, the boards. You said you were going to the, the uh, electronic music boards and all that kind of stuff. And man, yeah. that argument is always there. And everybody's like, this one's better. No, this one's better. Who cares? What's right. your latest song? <laughs> right. <laughs> What's your uh, studio setup like yeah. there? Now you were mentioning you were using keyboards and stuff and guitars. What, what all do you have hooked up? Is that the place where you record right there that you're sitting in? Yeah. So this is my, I have like my desk for my home office on the other side of the room. And then, yeah, this side of the room is, Kind of the music area um so i've got like a moog synth up here nice um this is the audio interface i've got yeah a bunch of I, it's got enough jacks that i can just leave things plugged in um yeah let's see so you've got the multi sound card uh multi channel sound card um this is a roland studio capture so it's got like 12 oh. 12 inputs of, you know, various XLR and quarter inch and USB and MIDI and like everything. Okay. Um, and then this is my guitar amp at, at the moment. Nice. Um, we've got yeah. one like that. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. We've got a tiny little orange. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I mean, I, and then I, I have like a, a speaker emulation pedal. I've got the, give me a little, view oh, here wow. the pedal board that's um, a bunch of pedals yeah you weren't kidding when you were talking about shoegaze earlier look at that yeah you can gaze so, all day at that so yeah the, the guitar amp doesn't output to any kind of speaker or anything which okay. you know i i don't want to disturb anyone but i do want to like get the the right sound so that's kind of how i try to navigate that problem yeah yeah, and then guitar and bass are over in the corner, and then the big Nord keyboard. Oh, you got a Nord too? Yeah. Our guitar player, Eric, plays on a Nord when he's playing keyboard stuff, so. Nice. Right now you need to tilt your camera up a little bit. Now yeah, we're just yeah. looking at your midsection. There we go. Right. There you are. <laughs> nice. Does that, uh, so is that a turntable right by your shoulder there, or is that a keyboard? Oh. I'm, I skipped over this. This is an auto harp. Oh, uh, yeah. This is something that I've been incorporating into the, the spiral Island stuff since the beginning. No um, kidding. So it's primarily an acoustic instrument, but I also like installed a little piezo pickup. Oh, really? So then that can go into whatever amp you want or whatever kind of effect pedals you want i like that what does it sound like when you hook um, that up to like do you distort it or is you just are you just using it clean it it can be a little overwhelming <laughs> distorted um <laughs> i mean auto harp you like you hold down one button you strum all the strings and you get yeah. like multi octaves of of a chord right and then if you run that through like a pitch shifter and you can get double the octaves of that chord essentially you're like it can just be even richer, even more full and like, you know. Oh, no, I want to hear that. It's not really cool. Yeah. Do you have it on any of the songs on the upcoming album? Um, it, it does show up on one of the songs, yeah. Okay. All right. So wait and see is what you're saying. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. 
Now, the artwork for the Spiral, Spiral Island album, all of a sudden I had a hard time saying that. Uh, who, who did that artwork? It was, uh, I believe you said it was a, a, a comic artist? Yeah, uh, David Lujan. Uh, he does uh, Narita comics. Um, okay. And he's been running a, a bunch of different Kickstarters. He got a, a few different series in progress, it seems like. Yeah, it's cool stuff. I like I like the art a lot. I mean, that's it's one of the, like the the high points of making an album is like being able to support an artist. Yeah, I mean, you can you can do album art so a lot of different ways, but for me, it's like yeah, you, if you can support somebody and get some really cool art out of it, that's like a a bonus. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I I I was I happened to be kind of trying to find folks to do that. And at that just happened that uh, David followed my band on Twitter. <laughs> really? And, became, and that's how I became aware of his art. And I was like, wow, you're doing cool stuff. Would you like to, to do an album cover? And we went from there. Wow. Yeah. I was going to ask how you ended up contacting the person, but really you were already kind of connected and just found out about that connection. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it was really happenstance that like, yeah, I was trying to figure out who, how to find the people who are making the kind of art that I was drawn to and mm-hmm. somebody doing that stuff just happened to be in the right place at the right time. Wow. And where is, where's the artist based out of? Um, I, you know, I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> I, no, that's all right. I just got some, uh, some of the comic books in the mail. So I could probably look at the envelope. <laughs> yeah. But they're not from, they're not from here. It's not like a comic no. book artist based here in Madison. Right. Oh, wow. That's really cool. So how now when you did contact them, I mean, did you give them some indication of what you would like or did you just say, do you have some artwork that you wouldn't mind I use on an album or was there one that you already wanted to use? Like, how did you choose what was going to be on it? Yeah, I mean, I think you can kind of you can definitely approach it in a range of different ways of like, you know, if somebody has has a particular piece on their site and, and you can be like, hey, can I license this or. Mm-hmm. If you have something in your mind of like, I want the the picture to show this person doing that, like you can, like some people would probably find that really helpful. Yeah. Um, in this instance, I had some kind of general color preferences and like general aesthetic ideas of like what I wanted to okay. convey about the music. So there's there's kind of the robot element, which was. I wanted to reflect that there's some like digital elements in the music of, yeah. of like synths and auto tune and stuff. Um, so we kind of talked about that stuff in terms of like what it's portraying. I, I kind of mentioned like different things that show up in the lyrics um, mm-hmm. saying like, yeah, there's a, a lyric about like kissing in the stairwell and that's kind of what he ended up kind of running oh, yeah. with. Okay. I, I could see that. Now, is it a robot kissing in a stairwell in the lyric? Because yeah. <laughs> that's what that, I, I believe it's like an Android or something like that. That's in the drawing. Cause there is a metal arm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, I, I do like the color. I like that. Uh, the idea of that uh, prefacing the color and that sort of stuff. And it really comes across well. I like, no, I really enjoyed the artwork. So I was, I was surprised uh, to, not surprised, but just curious about how you got that comic book artist. That's really cool. Now, yeah. what do you, uh, so what are your plans for when this comes out? Uh, as a musician, yeah. the, the most dreaded thing we have to do is also market ourselves. So what, what are your plans for promoting this? Or is it really just yeah. like, here's a solo thing? Like, are you going to perform it live? Are you going to be doing a digital push? Um, what are you going to be doing? I, I have a listening party scheduled on Bandcamp for okay. uh, August 9th, which is the, the day of the release. Um, I've, I've gone to a couple of those that other friends have done, and it seems like a really cool way to, to share recorded music and also like share stories about it yeah. and, and chat about it in real time with a, with a group of people. And Explain that to me in. a little bit. I guess I'm unaware of these list- Bandcamp listening parties. Yeah, I mean... It's it's basically a thing where you you sign in at a particular date and time and you know the audio starts playing and everyone's in a chat together. Huh. And so yeah, you can chat, you can kind of give reactions, you can chat about kind of the making of the music. Um 
can say hi to people you you know who, who show up. I guess I didn't. I, I this is new um, to me. Is this a pro feature or is it something that's just in Bandcamp? Um, I think it's it's like a basic feature. Huh. They may have some like advanced versions of it for for people right. who, oh, of who course. pay or whatever. But yeah, I think the the basic version of it is a basic feature as far as I know. I am surprised I do not know about this. No, that's cool. Okay, so you have that plan. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt yeah. you. It was, I was just like, no, how the no. hell do I not know about this? Okay. I mean, that's, that's the main thing. I mean, I'm also, um, yeah, I'm also kind of trying to get music out to radio, which is a, a challenge. Um, okay. What's your approach so, to that? Who? Um, <laughs> I, yeah, it's, it's like, I have a whole spreadsheet of radio stations and mm -hmm kind of what, how they want music submitted to them, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's mail or digital or whether they're going to go either way um, or kind of what they want for, for digital submission and all of this. And then, yeah, I've been kind of working through that, sending okay. emails or, or filling out forms or um, I got CDs made and I have kind of cardboard mailers and I got to stuff those at some point, probably this weekend. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, it's it's almost to the point where I would maybe hire somebody to help with that, but you know I know that that would be even more expensive and right. not have a lot of likelihood of return, as far as I'm aware. Right. Are you doing uh, national radio stations, college based? Um, mainly like college and independent stations. Okay. Um, so places locally, like you know WSUM, WRT. Right. Um. Okay. Yeah. Nice. And uh, the, uh, I mean, basically that's coming out. You have the CD. I, I like that you got the CD. I, that's where I saw the picture from. And that's when I was just like, wait, this is a project he's doing. So that was how I heard about it was seeing that you got the CDs printed up. Yeah. Um, and uh, so what are some things that you're going to do in the future or things that you have coming up that you'd like to tell people about? Ooh, I mean, aside um... from the album release. <laughs> Yeah, aside from the album, from this album release, um, I mean, Gentle Brontosaurus is also working on an album. We've our recording is 90, 95% done. And oh, we've, nice. We've done started some mixing on some of the songs already. Um, so it's further back in the pipeline than the Spiral Island project by quite a bit, probably. But we may we may get to release at some point this year or, or maybe early next year. OK. Um, where are you recording so that at? Um, Juan Hua had her basement is kind of where we practice. And it's, oh, cool! It, it's actually where uh, a few different other local bands have have been doing recording as well. So, all right, got a good studio set up there. Okay. All right, and then uh, anything else? I know that you've been yeah. uh, doing some writing as well. Yeah. Um, so I I had a short story in. Uh, a journal called Fusion Fragment, mm -hmm. which that was really cool. That came out in May. Um, I think I have a story in a forthcoming issue of uh, The Colored Lens. I think they publish quarterly, uh, but I don't know the exact time frame, but okay. sometime soon. What, um, what genre do you write in? Uh, mainly science fiction, okay. speculative fiction. All right. That kind of thing. And under the name what? Uh, my, yeah, my pen name is Aster Loxley. Aster Loxley. Why? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, mainly because uh, Nick Davies is just like, there is already multiple authors named Nick Davies. Oh, okay. Like, All right. I like, was going to no, say, uh, I have a common name and I still use mine, but there aren't other musicians yeah. named Tom Ray. <laughs> so I, I, I started submitting around and I, it, it felt like I have to preface every submission with like, no, I'm not this well-known British journalist. Or yes, <laughs> I am. <laughs> Why not? Just, just start pretending to be him. I mean, there's a movie script in there somewhere where you pretend to be a famous author and then yeah. you just kind of take over it. Cause nobody actually knows what he looks like. Um, <laughs> <laughs> something like that. I don't know. You write it. I'll just pitch it. Anyway, but uh, so do you have any shows coming up in the near future? Um, yeah, General Brontosaurus is playing on uh, June 3rd. So heading into the midweek or sorry, July 3rd, heading into the midweek break. 
Okay. Uh, we're playing at Red Rooster on, on Madison East Side. Okay. Well, this this actually might come out after that. So everybody, yeah. I hope you enjoyed their show <laughs> on July 3rd. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, yeah, what is after that? I think we have tentative plans for August at this point. Okay. Well, great. And then uh, everybody should go check out your stuff where? Where can they see more of your music and stuff yeah. like that? I think probably best place to start would be spiralisland.bandcamp.com. Um, and then, you know, once the album release date on August 9th comes, it'll be on, you know, all the normal streaming services as well. Cool. All right. Well, I want to thank you so much for talking with me today. Yeah, thanks for having me on.